Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, Good morning and happy Sabbath. Let us recite together our affirmation of faith taken from John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Psalm chapter 66, verse 1 through 6 says, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for bringing us into your house today. Lord, we just ask in a special way that you bless us in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we are truly delighted to be in your temple today. We are extremely happy to be in your presence. We pray, Lord, that as we offer our worship to you on this your holy day, that our worship will be acceptable in your sight, and that, O oh God, you will continue to tabernacle with us and bless us. Indeed, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Is there anyone that doesn't have a bulletin? Yes. Okay, I see some hands. Okay. And over here as well. Okay. All right. Well, they are getting their bulletins. Can the rest of us please turn to announcements? As you know, um, these um, past few weeks have been very challenging times for the church. And um, we have had some bereavements among us, but we thank God that he is still on his throne. Amen. And um, the two families that were affected, the Nwagu family, um, or the Nwagu Nwabe family, as well as the Obona family, would like to say a big thank you to the church family for coming out to support, to support them during this very difficult time. They are very appreciative and they said to make sure, please, to express uh, their thanks. And then this afternoon, immediately after divine service, there will be a brief practice for the kids, children's practice. So please, we're asking the children to, uh, the parents, please, to encourage their kids to stay so that, we, so that they can practice um, this afternoon, immediately after divine service. And then... Um, the next Toastmasters meeting will be next Sabbath, which is actually December 1. I know it says November 1, but it's December 1. 
and it's at 7 p.m. and it will be downstairs in a multi-purpose room. For those who are still interested in joining, it's not too late to do so. If you're interested and um, you would like the form, do let me know and I will try and get one to you. Toastmasters is a wonderful thing to join. It hones various skills, um, one of which, which is your public speaking skills. And then our next food bank will be on November 29th. We had to cancel the last one because of the weather, but we are hoping that we'll have a good weather. And if we do, it will be on November 29th. If your time allows, please come and um, help out. There are various ways you can help out. You can help to set up the food, offload the truck, distribute the food. You can also take food to those who may need it, but who may not be able to come get it. So there are various uh, ways that you can help as the Lord uh, impresses upon your heart and as you have, as your schedule allows, please come. We are open from 12 to 6 p.m. Our next Bible study session is also next Sabbath, December 1st. The, and then we have another one on the 8th. I had uh, sent around the handouts from the past two, two studies. If you didn't get it, and I have your email, do let me know and I'll resend it. If I don't have your email, please ensure that I get your email so I can get it to you uh, because they are really wonderful. The two last sessions were mainly focused on the questions that children raised. And these children were very focused. I, I for one, was really, really impressed because I know how distracted children can be. But this particular, these particular times, they were focused because they wanted answers to their questions. And uh, when Sister Princess finished, they seem satisfied, but this, the handouts are available for the adults as well, just in case they come back to you. And then we are still working on our visit to Sight and Sound. If you're interested in going and you haven't told me yet, do let me know today so that when I'm, uh, I'm making the arrangement, I will ensure that everyone is taken account of. The Jar of Faith should have been back already. The jar of faith is a little jar that's provided to us by our women's ministries leader. It has a red cover and we, what we do is we collect, our, uh, you know, relieve our handbags, our wallets of all those uh, coins that weigh, weigh the, down on them and put it in the, uh, in the jars. And that's our way, uh, the women's ministries way of contributing to the building fund. So please, if you would like one, let me know and I'll ask, well, let's, uh, Ada Judith, no? And I'll see if she can find you one, but it's really a wonderful way to contribute. And then uh, please do check the conference's website for any upcoming events that at the conference level that you may want to avail yourself of. For the uh, Prince Emmanuel uh, Focus events, we have a, a calendar, a master calendar on the bulletin board. You, I, I believe we also have copies there that you can take a copy of just to keep yourself abreast of what is coming up. Today we have our end of the month potluck and uh, I believe we have enough food for everyone. So please don't leave, there's no excuse, okay? Do, do stay so that we can fellowship in that way. We continue our daily morning prayers from Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. We study the lesson and we pray together and we believe that that is a wonderful way to start the day. It sets, it sets the tone for the day and that's um, a wonderful thing. We do that using our conference line, which means that you can stay in your comfortable bed and join. So please join us so that we can all pray together and um, lift uh, one another up in prayer. And then on Wednesday, we meet here at 7 p.m. For now, 7 p.m. It used to be 7.30, but because of the changing weather, it's now 7 p.m. And uh, we are studying the Bible. We are on Genesis, and our pastor is here for us to throw questions at, and it's really wonderful. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> and then, um, so if you have any questions about any of these announcements, please be sure to ask me, and um, I will hopefully be able to provide you with the answer. And we do request that if you have your phones on, that you please kindly put them on mute at this time so that we do not distract the service. If you do need to take a call or make one, kindly step outside in the audiovisual room uh, or downstairs and make your call. May God bless you as we worship him today.
Amen. Amen. And um, since I don't see Sister Janet yet, I'm going to take the, uh, it's going to be my honor to welcome everyone back into the house of the Lord. And uh, I just want to particularly welcome those people that have never seen me before. If this is your very first time seeing me, please stand. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So that's the first category. I'm going to come back to the rest. Please remain standing. Kindly tell us who you are. Unfortunately, they are. Can we get there? It's not working. <laughs> oh, sorry. Careful. Can you please tell me, tell us who you are and where you come from? Deborah Pearson from New York. Oh, welcome, Sister hey. Deborah. Glad to have you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Woods. I'm from the Highland Avenue, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Oh, welcome. Which is only about nine miles from Andrews. Oh, So if wow. you're in the area, you're welcome to come. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> welcome. We're very glad to have you. <laughs> You may know my son that sits up front, David Rogers. I'm his dad. This is mom. Oh. And this is our baby here. Oh. May God bless you. Welcome. And it's good visiting with you. Oh, wonderful. Well, yes, we, uh, we do vi visit the Wheaton Sub Adventist Church over in Silver Spring. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Very glad to have you. <laughs> All right. So that's the first category. Now, you know, at Prince Emmanuel, you're only a guest once, right? The next time you come back, we consider you family, but there are some family members that have been gone for a while. So we are going to ask you, and you know who you are. I don't want to point you out, right? Please stand and say hello to your family. That's really all I ask. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. Welcome back. Welcome back. And to our regular members, wow, what would it be without you? I look forward to coming because I like hugs, right? We do hugs here. And we do know that there are some people who don't. But what we do ask is that you suffer through it today, right? Then when you go home, you purge real well, right? In preparation for the next time you visit Prince Emmanuel. So we, but if you do li like hugs and you don't get enough, be sure to ask. And we'll do something about that too. All right? So our hands are filled with the blessings of God. And we want to make sure you get it. Blessings of God. Our hands are 
Good morning and happy Sabbath. That was okay. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath. Amen, amen. Because this, we have just come off of a holiday, a Thanksgiving holiday, where we are have been reciting what we've been thankful for. We should come in here with joy and with gladness and with and with energy. Amen. Yeah. Amen, amen. And so we just want to once again welcome all of our members and especially our guests for coming. And one of the things that we like to do um, that we started not too long ago is we want to pray over our guests. We want to, uh, if we can't leave with anything else when you come in here, we want to uh, give you a prayer to leave with. And so if we can, um, let's just extend our hands to a guest somewhere in the building and we'll say a prayer for you, a prayer of blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for the guests that you have brought into our house today. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for the fact that you have brought them here to worship in your house, Lord. We ask in a special way, Lord, that for whatever they came into these doors, that they will leave here with what they needed, Lord. And we ask that you just help them to get a deeper and closer relationship with you as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so we just have plenty to be thankful for. Um, I'm thankful once again to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, one of the things that I really love is when I am not traveling. Amen. 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 <laughs> and so when I'm here, you know, it's it's really good to just uh, be uh, here and not on the road all the time. Um, we just want to go over a couple of things. Uh, just as a reminder, we are going through our building fund. Uh, our goal is two million in two years. Amen. Amen. Now, what I can say is we say amen, right? But our current total, and we will start posting this in the bulletins for everyone to see, um, is not that great, okay? And so we are on course for two million in two years. So we're asking that if you can, please start giving to our building fund. You can write in the tithe envelope building fund and we'll designate the funds there. Um, I think currently we are at $936. And we are thankful for every penny of that $936. Amen? Amen. And so I praise God for that, but I know God can do something even greater. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're just encouraging if God puts it on your heart, please um, help us as we are trying to get a building where we'll have a good children's space. We'll have places where we can actually have uh, sufficient space for cooking classes and different things like that because we really want to focus on uh, giving our community what they need as we prepare for the second coming of Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. And also, there will be children's choir directly after this service. Uh, well, after the potluck, and, but after the potluck, we will have children's choir. So if you have your young ones, you want them to be involved, choir is one of the best ways, and we just ask that you have them um, stay uh, also. In addition, we have a special workshop here tonight uh, at 7 p.m. What time did I say? 7 p.m. 7 p.m., where we will be learning about organization. Now, how many people sometimes have disorder in their lives? 
Uh, I know I'm not the only one. I know we have some cousins and some relatives that, that are disorganized. And so, um, you know, our workshop is going to help us to declutter before the new year. Amen. 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 And it's presented by our own Mrs. Bacardi. If you can wave your hand. If you would like more information on that, please see her after service um, and she'll be able to give that to you. Um, also, we have uh, one of our own that will be traveling soon. And uh, she is um, one of our beloved golden girls, uh, one of our mamas. And we don't want her to travel and not have the church family pray over her and her family as they travel. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we ask if you can come forward, Mama, and the elders as well, if you can come forward. And we would like to have a special prayer um, for your safety and for uh, God to just see you and your family uh, as you travel. can place hands. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for bringing us in your house today. Father, we know that there's something special about your Sabbath day because you have sanctified it and set it apart. And so, Father, on this Sabbath day, we ask for a special blessing upon Mama. Uh, Father, we ask in a special way that you not only be with her, but you be with her family as well. Uh, Father, you know that they are traveling soon, Father, and they are just asking for you to send angels concerning them. Father, we just ask that you uh, bring them safely to their destination. But, Father, we know that oh, the travel is not the only thing that we need to pray for, but also their stay there as well. And so, Father, as they go back, Lord, I just ask that you give them a, a, a hedge of protection, Father. I just ask that you have angels to camp around them, Father. I just ask that you keep them safe from any hurt, harm, or danger that the devil or the enemy may want to inflict on them. Father, we are trusting them in your hands, Father, that you will bring, the, that you'll take them there and that you'll bring them back safely. And so, Father, we are just asking that while they are there, that you also allow them to be a blessing to those that are around you. Father, we know that you place your children in special places at special times to really be an example uh, to others of your love and your grace. And so, Father, we just ask that your love and your grace and your mercy emanate so much through Mama that others will ask, what is this thing about her and learn about you from her, Lord? Father, we just ask in a special way, Lord, that uh, also that you bring her back safely, Lord, because we love her and we want her to come back to her family safely here in Prince Emmanuel, Lord. So we just ask that you guide and protect them and that you be with them, Lord. Bless them. Allow them to enjoy themselves as well as they're gone, Lord. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall we stand, please, as we take our opening hymn, hymn 103, Oh God, Our Help, is also projected on the screen. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come Our shelter from the stormy blast And our eternal home Under the shadow of thy throne Still may we dwell secure Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, our earth received a frame from everlasting thou art God. Same. A 
are like anything done Shut as the watch that is the night Before the rising sun Oh, oh happy it is best I hope for years to We sing a couple of songs. The Preston is not here, but we'll sing a couple of songs. Hymn 499. Hymn 499. <laughs> in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer all our things we often forfeit this pain we bear Oh, because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations Is there trouble anyway? Courage, take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share?
Amen. 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 It's prayer time, Prince Emmanuel. But one of the things that I really want us to just focus on today is just giving thanksgiving and praise to our Father. Amen. Um, I was saying before, you know, I really enjoy um, thanking God for the things that he gives me, right? I thank God for, you know, him having a house over my head. I thank God for food on my table. I thank God for the wisdom that he gives me and, and the good things. Um, but I was saying today at Sabbath school that I also thank God for his chastisement. See, because a lot of times we, we thank God for the things that make us feel good. But sometimes it's, it's good to thank God for the things that don't make us feel so good. Because it's because I am chastised that I know that I'm a son. And so I thank God for the fact that even when I feel that I'm right, God proves me wrong. Amen? And so I just want to uh, invite anyone um, to, that wants to give God praise to come up as we pray. But not only that, if you have something yearning on your heart, if you have a special desire, we want you to come up to the altar of God. And we just want to say a prayer together as we lift up um, our, our voices to God. And so uh, he can answer our prayers and, and receive our thanksgiving today. So if you have anything you want to thank God for, please come forward. Or if you want to have special prayer, we invite you at this time. <clears throat> and if at all possible, if you can reverently kneel um, or stand, whatever you're able to do. Let us pray. Dearly Father, Lord, we just thank you once again, Father, for giving us another day of life. Uh, Father, we know that uh, we sometimes take waking up in the morning after we go to sleep at night uh, for granted. But Father, it's only by your grace and mercy and that your mercies are renewed every day that we have opportunities to live again. So Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Father, we thank you so much for the family and friends that you have brought to us, especially on this holiday. Father, we thank you for time away from the work and, and on all the toils of life, Lord, in order to just relax relax and rest in you, Father, on this Sabbath day. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that you have chosen imperfect vessels to perform your perfect will. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that you have not given up on us even when we're not always faithful to you. And so, Father, we just thank you because you are a good God even when we are not. Father, we thank you so much because you still love, you still care, and you still have mercy on your children even when we go astray. And so, Father, we just lift up our voices of thanksgiving to you here today. And Father, we want you to just know that we appreciate you, that we thank you, and that we love you. Father, we just ask also in a special way that as we lift up our prayers of thanksgiving, some of us have also come with burdens that we want to cast at your feet. Father, whatever these burdens may be, Lord, we just ask that you search every heart and mind in here. Father, whatever people stand in need of, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, financial lord you know what we need and so father we ask that you uh, grant those wishes according to your will father we just ask in a special way that you be with families in this church father we just ask that you be with marriages father lord we just ask that you bind the hearts of husbands and wives together that may have been separated father we just ask that you bring relationships back to you father and those who have may have strayed father we ask that you be with parents as they parent their children father you know that there's so many things in this world that cho that that can throw our children off course and get us get them distracted from focusing on you. So, Father, we ask that you just protect them from these things, Father. We ask that you just help and put a right mind in them so that when these things come and try to entice them, Father, you allow them to make the right decisions. Father, we just ask that you be with those who are suffering from financial issues. Father, you know that sometimes, Lord, that. Uh, the bills overweigh our, our paychecks, Father. You know, sometimes we look at things and we just see, we don't know how we're going to make it even tomorrow, Lord. And so, Father, I just ask that you bring peace to those who are struggling financially. Father, I ask that you allow them to rest in the fact that you are the great provider. Father, I just ask that you show them how to manage their finances. I ask that you show them how to use their money to the glory of you, Father. And I ask also, Lord, that you just continue to just bless them, Father, where they, they stand in lack, Lord, 
if they need more, Father, I just ask that you give them in abundance. Father, we just ask that you also be with those who are uh, struggling with uh, with just illness, Father. You know that, uh, especially in this season, Lord, there have been a lot of us that have been uh, stricken down, whether it's with something less serious like the flu or something more serious uh, like cancer or other physical ailments, Lord. Father, your children need your healing touch today. And so, Father, we call upon your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you come to those who are sick at, the, at their bedside, Father, and that you touch them, that you make them whole. But, Father, we read in your word that you don't even just have to touch, but you can just speak a word. And so, Father, we ask that you speak a word on their lives, Lord, and that you bring them back to full health. Lord, We, our sister just testified today how you were able to bring her out of cancer, Lord. And we just ask that you do the same with those that are suffering here today, Father. Lord, we ask in a special way that you also just be with those who are suffering from emotional pain. Uh, Father, you know that this world can really weigh down on our, our mental health and our emotions, Father. And sometimes we're just so drained and depleted that when we walk into your house, Father, we just have nothing left, Father. And so I just ask in a special way that you fill us up again. Father, I just ask that you just help us to be full of your spirit, to be full of your joy, to be full of your peace, Father, because the world wants to take these things away. But Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you block the devil's attacks on our emotional and our mental health, Father. And we ask that you give us the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Father, we just ask that you also just be with those who are struggling with their relationship with you. Amen. Father, we know that sometimes things can happen. Uh, Father, uh, whether it's losses, whether it's uh, just uh, our prayers are not answered the way that we want them to be answered. And so, Father, sometimes we turn away from you because we don't see your hand. And so, Father, I just ask that you do not let go of the hands of those who are about to walk out on you, Father. I ask that you grab their hands and that you bring them closer, Father, and that you bring them back into a right relationship with you and show them that true safety is in your house, Lord, in your family, and in your body, Lord. Uh, Father, I just ask that you also just be with us as a church. Um, Father, we are studying a lesson of unity. And Father, if you know that there are things that are trying to cause discord and disunity in our body, Lord. And so, Father, we just ask in a special way, Lord, that your spirit just work on your children, Father. Help us to humble ourselves, Father, and come to a place where we know that we all stand at the foot of the cross, Lord. We all need Christ as our Savior, Father. We all need Christ to direct us, Father. Help us to put... Uh, foolish pride aside. Help us to put our worldly uh, minds aside, Lord, and help us to be shaped and molded only by your spirit. And Father, I just ask that you bring the true unity that only your spirit can bring, not a fabrication of unity, not a pretentious unity, but true unity in your son and what he's done for us on the cross. And so, Father, we also ask that as your manservant delivers the message today, Father, that you anoint him from head to toe, Father. We ask that you put your spirit in a power way in him, Lord. Allow the words that come out of his mouth to speak directly to our souls, Father, and allow us to make a decision for you, Lord, whether that's rededication, whether that's a first time coming to you, whether that's just making us want to yearn for your word uh, once again as your soon coming is here, Lord. Help us have a spirit of urgency, Lord, to have this relationship with you because we know that you're coming soon. Father, we thank you so much for the love, the grace, and the mercy that you've given us today. Just help us to emulate that same love and grace and mercy to all those that we meet, Lord. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious. Jesus loves the little children. Good morning, children. How are you? Hello. Oh, good. Um, what we what did what did we just celebrate? Anyone know? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Wow. I want you all to take one minute to think about what you are thankful for, because I'm coming with the microphone to ask you to give me something that you are thankful for. Ready? Yes. Let's start with Morayo. What are you thankful for? My family. Good job. She's thankful for her family. What are you thankful for? For your sister. I thank you for God. Amen. Amen. She's thankful for God. Amen. What are you thankful for? Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thankful for Jesus, for family, for sister, for God, and for Jesus, right? Yes. We thank. It is always nice to count our blessings because sometimes we might look at us and say, oh my. Look at my shoe. I don't have that kind of shoe that my, my classmates have. I wish I had that. But then, if you look around, you will see somebody else whose shoe is not as nice as yours. Or uh, maybe you have a math problem and you see someone, math, mathematics, and then you see someone who is getting all of the answers right. I wish I was like that. But then, if you look at yourself, there's something that you are better at. Maybe it's singing. Maybe it's art, drawing, painting. You just have to thank God for whatever it is that you are good at. It's always nice to be thankful. Adults as well and we start from right now to be to appreciate god for what we have and i'm very happy this morning that you all can mention something that makes you happy that you want to be thankful for for jesus because he came and died for our sins for god because he provides we all live in a house right not in a hole like a mouse. Do you know that song? I'm thankful that I live in a house. And not in a hole like a mouse. I know it's very nice for the little tiny mice. But, a how, but I know that a house for me is best. Right? Good. <laughs> So maybe next time we'll learn that song, right? But it's always nice to be what? To be thankful. So now we want to pray and thank God for what he has done for us. Who want to pray? Any? Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the and daddy. Thank you for the best of daddies. Mommies and daddies. Mommies and daddies. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the children. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who died to save us. Who died to save us. Bless us today. Bless us today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can go to your seats.
taken from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. And it reads, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was a city, a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Mm. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in the, on the earth. May the Lord bless the reading. It is time for our Titan offering. I'm reading from Psalms 50 verse 10. And it reads, All the animals in the forest are mine, and the cattle on thousand hills. All the wild birds are mine, and all living things in the field. Let the giving of thanks be your sacrifice to God, and give the Almighty all that you promised. The tight is between you and God for the offering and the gift that you give to the church helps with the work of the Lord. We just finished Thanksgiving, right? Yes, yes. We celebrated so much. We ate so much. <laughs> we have a lot to thank God for. But now he's asking us to do something for him whether it's through your tithe, which is, you know what it is, or the offering that you help the church with. Pastor just mentioned that we have our goal. We are doing fundraising. And the goal is two years, two million, or two million, two years. And we are behind already but we are not giving up yeah. because of the scripture reading we just read we need to consistently ask the lord and to appeal to you today to open up yourself to give to the lord in jesus name Amen. Amen. Because he's 
given Jesus Christ is found and now let the weak say I am strong and let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. give thanks to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures there below. Praise Him all God the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, dear Lord, we just thank you. Whatever we have, oh Lord, is what you have given to us. Help us to remember that and to do what you have asked us to do to further your work here on earth dear lord so we thank you lord for blessing us and we ask you that you help us to have a giving heart and a thankful heart and when we give to give with a good and cheerful heart in jesus name we have prayed Amen. Good morning, church. How are you? Good morning, Emmanuel. How are you? I'm so sorry about this morning. Our praise and worship segment was cut a little short. I had some delays. I will tell you a quick story. <laughs> I'm heading towards the train and so many things were in the way. The bus wouldn't come on time. I'm running. There's two vicious dogs loose in the street. I'm like, Lord, help me. But he did. I got here. I have no excuses. I just want to tell you that I'm here by the grace of God. And thank you for those who pitched in to help me get here this morning. <laughs> Your special song today is meaningful. Um, it is called Falling in Love with Jesus. It's the reason why we're here. And if you know it, sing with me, please. back again falling in love church oh falling in love with Jesus oh falling in love with Jesus falling in love yes with Jesus it's the 
the best thing I ever, ever done. Listen to this. <clears throat> Whoa. In his arms, I feel protected. Yes. In his arms, I'm never disconnected. No. In his arms, I feel protected. There is no place I'd rather, rather be. Fall in love, church. Whoa. Fall in love. Yes. With Jesus. Oh. Falling in love. best thing that I've ever, ever, ever done. done. And tell me what you feel in his arms. Yes, in his arms I feel protected. Oh, yes, in his arms I'm never disconnected. I'm never disconnected. Oh, I feel protected. I feel protected. It's no place I'd rather, rather be. Sometimes we just have to fall in love again, right? Falling in love with Jesus. I am falling in love with Jesus. the best thing oh it's the best, best thing that I ever, ever, ever done. done thank you church keep in mind to fall in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus. Yes. Are you in love this afternoon? Yes. You know, 15 years ago as a, as a child, I was 14 years old. Now you know my age. <laughs> and, you know, a friend of mine who was not even Adventist, but a Christian, you know, encouraged me to become baptized. And in a week of prayer, Three of us went under the water. I gave my life to Jesus 15 years ago. And the product of who I am, what I'm becoming, is a result of that decision to serve God. Brothers and sisters, we might not articulate it as love, but that's what it is, a love relationship with God. And there are tangible benefits to it. So I would encourage anyone who is yet to fall in love with Jesus, to fall in love with him. It's the best, best thing that you would ever do. I've not regretted that decision one day in my life. And by the grace of God, I'll continue to be in love with him. This afternoon, I want to turn your attention to the book of Luke to talk a little bit about prayer and a little bit about persistent prayer. And how prayer is one of the hallmarks of the habits of faith formation. And the importance of being persistent, persevering in prayer. Not because we're doing God a favor or because God needs to hear from us. In fact, I would ask us to put aside the idea that prayer is communicating with God. It's not. 
We don't need prayer to communicate with God. But what prayer is, is one of the spiritual disciplines by which we learn to trust God. We learn to rely on God. We learn to be in a relationship with God. So let's put apart the communication piece and think about the relation piece that prayer um, suggests. The Bible says that Jesus told them a parable in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And the need for them to pray always, that's the disciples, the need for them to pray always and never give up. And he used this parable that there was a judge in a town who did not fear God nor respected man. And a widow in the town kept coming to this judge, asking the judge to give her justice against her adversary. For a while, the Bible says that he was willing, but later he said, he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps on bothering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by her continual coming or her persistent coming. That's the first part of the, the, the story of the text, which is a parable that Jesus illustrated. And then the second part of the text is the application of the parable. The Lord says, Jesus says, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay to help them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice nevertheless. And this is the question for us. This is the part that we must wrestle with. The part that we must think about. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he find this kind of faith? on the earth let us pray father in heaven as we open your words open our hearts to understand we pray today lord that you will teach us how to pray that you'll teach us the the purpose of prayer and that at the end oh god that we will be in a deeper relationship with you hide me behind the cross may that render be seen or heard but jesus high and lifted up we pray in jesus name amen so Jesus brought the disciples together because he was nearing his journey to the cross. In fact, scholars and theologians talk about this portion of Luke as the journey towards Jerusalem. The culminating act of his three and a half years of ministry to people on earth where he would be hung on the cross. And so on his way to Jerusalem, as he's making his way to Jerusalem, he's teaching the disciples little things that they will need to keep them going when the difficult time comes, when the dark hour of earth comes. And one of the things that he wanted to teach them and emphasize over to them is this thing of cultivating faithful habits. This thing of cultivating right attitudes, right disposition, right behavior, right conduct. Teaching them how to have something deep within the time that will be difficult for them. So he's going to teach them about the need to pray always and never give up. The need to rely on spiritual discipline and spiritual formation and spiritual strength when a time of difficulty comes. And so he uses a parable, which is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. In fact, Jesus often tells parables which are illustrations of things around you, things that you would be familiar with. So this time he uses a very common trope. That is a someone in trouble going to the justice system to get justice. And so we're told that there is this woman, this widow, this woman who has no power, no possession, no property. She's left to fend for herself because her husband has died. And within this patriarchal system, the husband would be the one who owns everything, including her. She was just a piece of property. Now that the husband is out of the way, this woman is left to fend for herself she was poor she was ostracized she was on the margins of society yet even though she was down and dispossessed there was someone else who decided that yes I'm gonna put my feet on her neck even though she's down there struggling and so we hear the story of an adversary we don't know the nature of the oppression but it was such that this woman keeps on going to the justice system keeps on going to the judge and said I beg you give me relief from my oppressor 
The Bible says that she didn't go once. She went many times asking for relief, asking that perhaps that, 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 that there was a neighbor who was trying to take away the little that she has. And we know this story very well because over Elisha met a woman over in Kings whose husband had died. She was left with a child. All she had was a, a little bit of oil. And then, and then the debtors, the, the creditors came to take that little bit that she had to sustain herself. Not enough to feed herself and her son. So we know that within that system, that patriarchal system, that within that system of economic greed, that the very marginalized, the very disinherited were on the bitter end of that stick. So we don't know in this woman's case what it is. Whether it's the little bit that she had that was being taken away. Or whether she was being forced into a situation where she would be sexually exploited by very wicked men. Whatever it was, she kept going to the ruler, to the judge and said, give me relief. Give me reprieve. Sometimes brothers and sisters, we put so much faith in man-made institutions. But they can be very indifferent to the cause of the oppressed. In other words, Jesus, the, 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 the Bible said that, 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 that this man, this ruler, this one who was supposed to give justice, to uphold the law, to help this woman, was indifferent. He turns her away. But brothers and sisters, she kept on going, kept on knocking, give me justice. Till one day, the guy said, you know what, I, I, I can't take this bothering anymore. I'm just going to give her the justice she wants. And Jesus... Use that little illustration. A very common case of going to court and being turned away. To teach the disciples and to teach us a very important lesson about persistent pursuit. Yes, yes. In other words, Jesus said, look at this. Did you see this? This woman kept bothering this very powerful man until he became annoyed and he gave her justice anyhow. Imagine moreover your father who is in heaven, your father who owns everything, your father who is the God of justice, your father who is the God of the oppressed, your father who has all the power in his hand. How much more Hallelujah. will he give to those who ask? In other words, I remember that this is the same father that Jesus told us that, you know, the sparrows, you can't put a price on it, but you're worth more than sparrows. So how much more God will respond to your needs? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, watch this man who was so indifferent to this woman's cause, decided for selfish gains that he don't want, he doesn't want to be bothered anymore. Granted this woman justice to more oppressor. Imagine when you ask, will God delay? His elect who asks, how do we ask? His elect who pray to him continually. It doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, that God can't give you relief even before you ask. It doesn't mean that you need to pray three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before God hears you and give you relief. In fact, the Bible says that he knows the things that you desire even before you ask and he's willing to give it to you. However, there are important lessons to be learned by persistently pursuing God. For example, we learn from, we learn strength from our difficulties. We learn diligence from our despair. We learn to trust God with an unwavering commitment when we continually pursue him. We learn humility. We learn humility from us asking and asking and asking God because it shows that we are dependent completely on him. So this matter of prayer, brothers and sisters, this matter of pursuing is not so much that we're doing something for God or to God. But God is cultivating within us the deep spiritual habits that will sustain us when difficulty comes. Because when you prayed for something and you prayed very long for it and you get it. The next time when trouble comes, you remember the God who hears and the God who responds. You remember that though the night seems very long and that despair seems to overtake you. That only weeping will only endure for but 
but a knife of joy comes in the morning the night might be long it might seem forever but joy comes you have to persevere pursue pray consistently never giving up the text splits in two as i've mentioned the parable which is the earth story and the lesson which is a spiritual application but it brings us to something that paul says in second corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 4 onwards that that, that there is a kind of dualism in which we operate there is the earthly but there's the heavenly there is the temporal, but there's the eternal. There is the now, there is the not yet. There is the present, there is the future. For Paul says that, watch it carefully, brothers and sisters, that though we are walking in the flesh, we're not really walking in the flesh because our battle is not fleshly. It's not carnal. And therefore the weapons of our warfare can't be carnal, but they must be spiritual. They must be mighty through God for the pulling down a stronghold where we get on our knees and we stay on our knees and we pursue God persistently, consistently, without wavering, not giving up. Then our prayers, our warfare will be won because our prayer will shake the very foundation sons of hell it's the habits that we have to cultivate this woman's story of going to the judge knocking on his door asking for justice it's a persistency but jesus is saying that you don't even have to put out that much effort in order to shake things up because all you need to do is to petition god he might tell you wait a little bit petition me some more but the ultimate result is that god who hears will answer the prayers of the saints jesus says in the text how much more the elect that's you I know we don't like to talk about ourselves as the elect because some of us, we, we, you know, we, we take this Christian thing to be too, what's the word now? I don't even know the word to use. I want to say pian pian, but only you will understand that. I want to say, we, we take it so simple and simplistic. We, we, we don't operate like we're in battle and that we have spiritual power and spiritual Access. We behave as though we are defeated and dispossessed and disinherited and that we don't have a heavenly father who has already given us salvation and has already won the battle for us. That even though we are fighting in the temporal, we are fighting in the earthly, the battle already be decided in the eternal and that the devil can't overthrow you because he's a loser from hell and God has given you victory over and over over and over again we operate like we're not saints and elects because you know you, you adventists like to say well if you talk about yourself as saints and elects then you know you're being presumptuous but i am very presumptuous in the salvation that jesus has given me when i read paul he never said just adelphoys and brethren he said elect and saints we have been spiritually elected and predestined unto salvation by the act of jesus christ on the cross if you want to accept it is your business if you don't that's your business but as as far as i can tell god has made the provision for all of us so if you want to accept the election it's up to you so that's us the elect what are the things on your heart? What are the things on your minds? What are the things that are weighing you down? The strongholds in your life that need to be broken. The strongholds that need to be shaken. The bondages, the chains that are holding you back from your full potential and your spiritual living in Jesus Christ. What are those things? The Bible is saying to us, through the example of this woman who didn't have much but kept on going that you can have victory over those things this morning God has made provision for all of us to have victory over every stronghold in our lives and we have one very powerful tool in our arsenal and that's persistent prayer because it will pull down strongholds Ellen White, Ellen White says, 
in thoughts from the, the, the Mount of Blessing. That the soul, listen to this, the soul that turns to God for help, its support, its poor, its daily, my daily earnest prayer, will have noble aspirations. Watch the benefits now. Noble aspirations, clear perceptions of truth and duty, lofty purposes of action, and a continual hungering and thirsting after righteousness. In other words, I, I want to suggest to the church this morning that, 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 that this prayer business is not just you talking to God. This prayer business is not for God, it's for you. You know, in other words, Ellen White reminds us that, that, that in prayer, God is not brought down to us. We are brought up to God. So in other words, all this prayer and praying business is for us. It's our spiritual habits that we are cultivating. It's part of our formation as elects and saints and Christians who have been washed and redeemed and brought by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when we pray earnestly, keep on knocking. Keep on lifting up those things to God and those individuals to God. Because it's not only things that God is interested in. God wants you to bring people before him. So he can deal with them in a good way and a bad way. Because we do know that we have some people who have become stronghold in our lives. And we have to lift them up to God so God can break them out of our lives. We have other people who we have to bring out to God so God can make them a blessing to other people around them. Because in their current state, their people are terror. Am I speaking truth this morning? So the benefits that Ellen White points out, it's character formation. It's clear thinking. It's understanding our Christian and our civic duty. It is, it, it, it is prompting us to purpose of action and continual hunger and thirst. She continues that the greatest blessing that God can give to all of us, to any human being, is a spirit of earnest prayer. And I pray that we'll cultivate this habit of earnest praying. And understand that persistent prayer, brothers and sisters, is different from the, 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 the mundane, ritualistic asking. You know, it's not the five minutes, oh, thank you, Jesus, or the one second, all right, bless me today, or, 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 or the, 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 the vain, repetitive actions. But persistent prayer is it, it, deep. It's personal. It's coming from somewhere because you have felt something. You have been through something and you know the God that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. You know the God who can move heaven and earth for you because if God could send his son Jesus to die on the cross, what good thing will he withhold from those who ask and keep on asking and keep on petitioning in the throne of grace we're talking about deep persistent personal prayer it is a prayer that moves God it's a prayer that moves heaven and earth it's the prayer of Daniel when he was down in Babylon and, and, and Lucifer tried to withhold God's answer for him but angels were discharged it's the prayer of the children of Israel crying out under oppression and God says to Moses go and deliver them for I've heard their cry it is the prayer of David when he said Lord I have sinned and I have gone far but forgive Give me, oh God, it's the prayer of the saints, of the righteous that say, God, you are able. Amen. Amen. Keep on praying. This is no simple thing. Because our prayers and the results thereof, they have temporal and eternal consequence. Understand, brothers and sisters, that when you pray for people, it's not just that you're effecting change in this life, but you're effecting change in the life to come. Understand, brothers and sisters, that, 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 that when they were a wayward child going away from God and the grandmother got on her knees and started to pray for her grandson to come back to Jesus, it was not empty words and vain language, but it was power emanating and power that, that God understood and God did something about. There is power in persistent 
personal prayer. Amen. So if we're in this warfare, if we're in this spiritual battle, we can't depend on human tools to win the fight. We can't necessarily turn to human institutions to give us justice from oppression. We can't necessarily turn to human beings to understand our plight and to hear our, 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 our teary language and to, to, to do something about our situation. But we have to get on our knees. Yes. And we have to petition the throne. Yes. Whatever it is, how, no matter how simple you think it is, how complex you think it is, God specializes in hearing and answering yes. prayers. Amen. 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 So Jesus turned to the disciples after he expounded the meaning of the parable. So he told the parable first, and then he asked, he explained that this is how God operates. Better than human beings. He will hear, he will answer. Mm, yes. But then he turned to them again and said, so what? Now that you've heard the parable, I told you the meaning. What are you going to do about it? All right, all right. He says in the eschaton, the second coming. When Jesus comes, the skies are burst asunder and the Son of Man descends after the blasting of the trumpet and the voice of the archangel. So what are you going to do about it? This persistent prayer, this, this faith that knows that God is able, will Jesus find it in you? Where will your faith be? This kind of faith. This kind of faith that acts boldly. This kind of faith that trusts God unreservedly. This kind of faith that knows that prayer in the hand of the saint is a mighty weapon to pull down stronghold. This kind of faith, will God find it in me? Will God find it in you? And so the challenge that Jesus was laying for the disciples and for all of us is to cultivate habits of faith. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Habits of faith. Yeah. Focusing on spiritual things. Doing spiritual things. Doing godly things. Thinking about godly things. Living godly faith, brothers and sisters. Like prayer. Like fasting. Like thanksgiving. Yes. Are habits of the Christian yes. mind. Yes. These are things that you do. You practice. They're not passive. No. You don't just believe in prayer and that's okay. No, 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 no. You have to pray. You have to live prayer. You have to do prayer. They're actions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to faith. I believe and that's fine. Your belief has to be enacted. And embodied. And inhabited. You have to live it out daily. And your faith has eternal consequence. Because. It's a life of people for time and eternity that's been decided. Yes. So when Jesus ends by asking a question, it leads us to ponder. Mm -hmm. What kind of faith will God find in you? Mm -hmm. Will he find this faith? And so I leave where Jesus left off. What kind of faith will God find in us? Mm -hmm. And so brothers and sisters, I encourage you, I implore you yes. to cultivate habits of faith. Persistent personal prayer. Perfect it. Daily practice. Do it. Cultivate habits of faith. So today, brothers and sisters, if there's someone here who wants God to help them to cultivate habits of Christian formation, habits of spiritual character, Will you raise your hand for God to help us? Hands down. More focusedly, if you're here and you're not a baptized member of the church, you're not a Christian, baptized Christian, and you want to say, God, help me so I can make a decision, not just for time, but for eternity, that one day soon and very soon, 
I can be completely committed to you so that I can learn the practical benefits of prayer, faith formation, spiritual discipline, spiritual practice. Let me see your hand. Not yet baptized, but one day you want to make that decision. Let me see your hand. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. We're going to thank God for what he's doing in each of your lives. We're going to thank God that he's moving us closer and closer to eternity with him. And that as we journey, though there are difficulties, that we will depend on the power that Jesus has given us to rise above challenges and to continually seek him. So Father, we lift up each worshiper in the house today and we lift up each worshiper who joined us on our live stream. We pray God that we will cultivate within ourselves the habit of persistent personal prayer. We'll cultivate the habits of faith whereby God we will have something in the reserve when difficulty comes, that we will not just be empty vessels, but we'll be spiritual vessels with spiritual power. So Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to renew our hearts and our minds. I pray, Lord, that all of us will come to the unity of faith. I pray, Lord, that for all those strongholds in our lives, even now, that we'll whisper silent prayer and say, God, Tear down the strongholds. Make us free. And free indeed. So Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us where we have sinned, where we have come short. Keep us, Lord, in perfect peace with you. And we await your coming, which is soon and very soon, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our last hymn of the day. Great is thy faithfulness. May this song remind you of his power and his love to keep us and to sustain us. Great is thy faithfulness Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassion, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever will be this side. Respond this side. Great is thy faithfulness. Together. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Ladies, second stanza, please.
to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Father be now the glory the power the dominion now and forevermore amen thank you some announcements to make amen. amen pastor Golson thank you very much for reminding us of how powerful God is and how persistent we need to be I pray that the Lord will please continue to be with us as this message rings in our hearts I just want to remind us that we have potluck today and it's our end of uh, the month potluck and we are asking that everyone please join us so that we can all fellowship together in that way and immediately after that we'll have the children uh, practice briefly uh, their songs amen amen Yeah. 
peace is mine, peace is mine, peace is yours, peace today is mine, oh, oh I, I told Satan, get away, get thee behind, oh, tell me now, tell me, who can stand before us? When we call on God's great name, Jesus, Jesus, you're precious, Jesus, I said we have the victory, and I got my mind, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday Oh, victory, yes, victory is mine Victory is mine, and yours I said victory today is mine Oh, I, I told Satan, get away now, get me behind Because victory today is mine Do 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 do